Influence is power. Never let anyone tell you different. Recently, IGN dropped a top 10 list of the most powerful Marvel villains in their MCU. And in a top five, we have Dormammu, Ego, Thanos at number three, Hela at number two, and Infinity Ultron from What If at number one. Now, some people may argue with that list. I personally would also argue with that list, but not for the reasons you're thinking. Like I said, influence is power. My man's Killmonger influenced the entire nation of Wakanda, damn near the whole nation. Not everybody, but damn near everybody. In the absence of their king T'Challa, whom they thought dead, to rise up against the rest of the world to liberate all other black people across the world. And my mans don't even make the top 10. That's kind of telling. But I will leave that up to y'all to uh, debate that. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks. This is Do You Speak Geek? D Y S G. Keep it real, that's key. We the best OGs. Dope topics, come see. D Y S G. Keep it real, that's key. We the best OGs. Dope topics, come see. I got a question do you speak geek? Yeah. New episodes on the podcast dropping each uh-huh. week. Get hip to the game. I'm giving y'all a sneak yeah. peek. Flavor for your ears. Bars flowing on unique beats. Sheesh. Blurs and nerds, freaks and geeks. The source wall wins. They dropping comics. You should cop. I think you don't appeal. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep on Dono and Nicks. They preaching the gospel. Real ish, ill like mono. They sick. Right. Thumb life if you're into games with combos and kicks. This podcast is a gift. It's as real as it gets. Yeah. Blurs taking over. We're clever marketing. We gain exposure. Feeding the community magic. Your boy's a nerd promoter. The dialogue is Jimmy Crack. Corn, we aiming for gold. The truth was told. I can't speak for other platforms. Uh-huh. Sharp as cats out like knives, claws, and tack thorns. Yeah. We blacking out, going crazy like a black storm. DYSG, don't forget to follow back. Hosting on the airwaves, always keeping it a stack. Flowers to my haters, psych. I ain't giving y'all jack. Number one on the charts, give your boy a gold plaque. Yo, yo, welcome everybody. We are back once again. It's your boy Nix, and this is DYSG, the podcast, episode 118. Shout out to every single person out there who has been rocking with us thus far for the last few years. All my loyal listeners and subscribers, and if you are new to this podcast, welcome to Do You Speak Geek. This is the podcast where we bring you all the latest and greatest as far as news and reviews inside of the geek realm. Shout out to the home team, Spreaker. Appreciate y'all for all you've done. And if you are looking for this podcast, hey, we ain't hard to find. We are everywhere. So wherever you get your podcast, please be sure to search Do You Speak Geek and go ahead and hit that subscribe. Thank you to all new followers on all across social media and also the YouTube channel. We appreciate each and every one of y'all. By way of announcements, I got something cooking up. It's coming June 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a panel discussion on the rise and fall of DC on the CW. That will be either live or taped. Kind of figuring out how I'm going to do it. But it's going to be on DYSG's Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch channel. So please be sure to keep an eye out for that. It's going to be a dope one. <laughs> Do you speak geek.com, the central hub for everything DYSG. We got the blogs, we got the merch. We have the podcast is there, the YouTube channel, social media. So please be sure to pull up, hit that link and uh, say it as a favorite, you know, Do you speak geek.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook at DYSGFB. 
Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets and Instagram, TikTok and Quirk Chat at the Speak Geek. The YouTube channel, the only place where you can find the Donald and Daddy show. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what you guys think. So there's been one hot button story going on all week long. It's been developing over time. And we got to talk about it. Before we do, though, we're going to get into the reviews. So let's go ahead and do what we do about this time, people. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. Are you ready? All right, people, let's hop into these reviews at Rapid Fire. King Arthur Knight's Tale. A strategy RPG that gets the fantasy of playing as a heavily armored knight exactly right, but it would have been a better game if it didn't pad itself out with so many repetitive battles. It can get kind of monotonous, um, but, you know, hey, if that's your thing, then that's your thing. You might enjoy this one. Evil Dead The Game. It's an asymmetric multiplayer game of cat and mouse that's compelling and exhilarating. Despite being rough around the edges, much like the horror comedy that inspire it, this still turned out to be a pretty great game. Please check this one out. It's pretty dope. And finally, we have Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Starring Andy Sandberg and John Mulaney, it's a hilarious hybrid meta journey into cartoon showbiz. A few the, the cameos in there were awesome, y'all. So please check that out. It's one you will definitely enjoy to watch on Disney Plus. Check that one out. Okay. Let's get into this. Sasha Banks, Naomi, and the WWE. Now, for those of you who have been living under a rock or who just don't pay attention to professional wrestling, Sasha Banks and Naomi walked out of Monday Night Raw on Monday, May 16th. And according to a statement released by WWE, Sasha Banks and Naomi placed the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships on John Lerner Nice's desk before leaving. Sasha Banks and Naomi were scheduled to be involved in a six-pack challenge, which would have crowned a new number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship to face Bianca Belair at Hell in a Cell. Immediately after WWE announced the match on air, they switched the match to a singles match between Becky Lynch and Asuka, announcing that Naomi and Sasha Banks had left the building. WWE later issued a statement In the statement, WWE claimed that Naomi and Sasha Banks were uncomfortable working with two of the scheduled women for that match, despite having previously worked with them. The match was also scheduled to include Nikki Ash and Dewdrop. The WWE has suspended indefinitely and stripped Sasha Banks and Naomi of their titles after the tag team's bulk and participating in a match earlier this week. Sasha Banks and Naomi let us down, quote, Michael Cole said this during SmackDown on Friday. The WWE Women's Tag Team Championships walked off the show and walked out of the building during Monday Night Raw. Now, me saying that is not enough. Let's let's play the sound bite real quick. Pat, switching gears now, I want to talk about what happened this past Monday night when Sasha Banks and Naomi let us all down. The WWE Women's Tag Team Champions walked off the show and walked out of the building during Monday Night Raw. They were supposed to take part in this, the main event, the six-pack challenge, where the winner would be next in line to face Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship. However, Sasha and Naomi took the Tag Team Championships into the office of our head of talent relations, left them there, and then promptly walked out of the arena. Their actions disappointed millions of WWE fans and their fellow superstars. So because of what Sasha and Naomi did this past Monday night, they have been suspended indefinitely. And we will have a future tournament to crown the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. Now let's unpack that for a second. Him saying this live on TV gives me two different vibes. One, I haven't seen them do this before. So on one hand... I think it's a work. Yeah, 
I think it's a work. However, on the other hand, if Vince Kennedy McMahon is this petty to drag these two women like that through the voice of Michael Cole on air during their live product, Vince, you are a despicable and horrible man. I got no love for you on that. None. And yes, it seems a little racist to me because when Tony Storm wanted her release, everybody was so supportive. Like, yeah, Tony, you, you should you should move on and go. When when these two black women walk out, oh, they let us down. They were they were they were being difficult. When Stone Cold walked out, you didn't say that shit. Hmm. Interesting to me. Those are just my thoughts though. What do y'all think? Let's hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the source wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. (laughs) There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pool list this week. Batman Fortress number one. When an unknown alien ship enters Earth's atmosphere, disrupting global power and communications and plunging the planet into chaos, the world is left wondering, where is Superman when he is needed most? In the mysterious absence of the last son of Krypton, Batman must rally the rest of the Justice League to counter the alien threat. But first he must quell a crime wave on the black out streets of Gotham City. Gary Whitta and Derek Robertson join forces to turn everything you think you know about Superman upside down in DC's new comic book miniseries, Batman Fortress. Now, for those of you who are like, wait a minute, I thought they were dead. Not canonical, but this seems pretty dope. If I think they're going to do what I think they're going to do, this should be a dope one. I'm ready for this one. Legion of X number one. Peace, love, and justice to Krakoa. Krakoa has its laws. Does it have justice? To remain a mutant sanctuary, Krakoa must safeguard itself against those who would damage its peace or traumatize its people. The lost must be found, and the wicked must face redemption or retribution. It's up to the ever soulful swashbuckler Nightcrawler to keep the spark alive and Legion to host his unique team in the psychedelic mind space called the Altar. With Pixie on point, Juggernaut as a one man riot squad, and a host of X favorites on the beat, the Legion of X will do anything to protect mutants' right to pursue happiness and hope. Kicking off with a hunt for a missing Akakia god and skin jacker possessing innocent mutants. Read this issue and come meet Weaponless Zen or Serata and a villain worth praying for. The destiny of X bears its heart and soul right here. Should be a dope book. My man that crawl was leading team, so that's always a good idea. Rogue Son number four. As Dylan struggles to balance his normal life with his superhero life, a new threat from his father Pat his father's past menaces New Orleans. Can Dylan finally tap into the power of the Black Fire? Or is Demonica the one enemy Rogue Sun can't stop? This Radiant Black uh, universe is so dope, y'all. If you're not reading these books, please catch up, please. Speaking of, Radiant Red number three. The new job approaches and planning commences. There's just one problem. Satomi can't do what they need her to do. She'd better work it out fast, though, because when her home life and her new career both threaten to come crashing down, Satomi will be forced to decide which does she want to save more. Mm. Picking between home life and work life? Eh, Not a tough choice for me, but hey, I'm not Radiant Red. (laughs) DC vs. Vampires. Hunters, number one. A blood-soaked one-shot tale of vampire violence. The son of Batman, after years of training to be an assassin, is on a path toward utter destruction of the vampire race. Enter Damian Wayne, Vampire Hunter. Yo, get it off, Damian. I would love to see Damian 
Damian Wayne slashing and just killing vampires. Ugh, let, let that little monster loose, please. Let him do his thing. And finally, we have the Avengers number 56. Jane Foster takes the spotlight. She once famously wheeled Mjolnir as Thor, Goddess of Thunder. Today, she guards the worlds of the living and the dead as the winged Valkyrie. Now, those two versions of the same mighty hero somehow find themselves face to face in a desperate bid to save the soul of Jane Foster. Mm. Everything's gearing up toward this Avengers, X-Men, Eternals thing, man. It's going to be pretty dope. I can't wait. But you can get that book and several others that I mentioned this Wednesday at your local comic book store. Now, in source wall news, Marvel finally announces a Mandalorian comic, but there's a catch. Nearly two years after Lucasfilm Press teased new comics and novels tied to the Mandalorian, Disney Plus series is finally getting a comic book tie-in. The only catch is Marvel's Star Wars The Mandalorian is an adaptation of the show rather than a new story. Star Wars Mandalorian is an eight-issue limited series, which presumably means each issue will adapt one episode of the Mandalorian Season 1 series. The series written by Rodney Barnes and drawn by George Gentney. The creative team also includes anchor Carl Story, colorist Rachel Rosenberg, and main cover artist Eddie Gravnov. For those kids out there who would love to read an adaptation, I think it's fine, but... Yeah, I would have much rather want, I would have much rather had an original story from the Mandalorian in the, in the comics because Marvel does something very special with their Star Wars comics. I mean, I'm not sure if those of you out there actually read them faithfully, but some of those books, man, are pretty dope. And a Mandalorian one would slap hard. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. What do you guys think? DC announces Batman One Bad Day series of one-shot comics. So DC will be publishing a series of standalone 64-page one-shot comics featuring Batman's world-famous enemies. The series of releases under the header of Batman One Bad Day will tell definitive tales featuring the Riddler, Two-Face, the Penguin, Mr. Freeze, Catwoman, Bane, Clayface, and Ra's al Ghul. The One Bad Day name is a reference to The Killing Joke, one of the most famous one-shot comics of all time, you think? (laughs) Featuring perhaps the darkest version of the Joker in which he says, All it takes is one bad day to reduce the sanest man alive to lunacy. Eisner-winning long-term Batman writer Tom King has partnered with artist Mitch Gerard's to deliver the Riddlers one bad day and has promised the scariest fucking Riddler of all time. If it's any worse than what was in the Batman, give it to me. I'm ready. Let's go. (laughs) All right. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, in TV and movie news, ladies and gentlemen, we finally have been confirmed. We are getting a new Daredevil series. (laughs) Yes, people, it's in the works at Disney+. Plus, According to Variety, Covert Affairs duo Matt Corman and Chris Ord are attached to write and executive produce a series that will once again bring the man without fear into the Marvel fold. The MCU has already established Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock and Vincent DeFarnio's Kingpin exist in their universe after the two debuted in Netflix's street level Marvel Universe. Of course, we saw Matt Murdock in the Spider-Man No Way Home film and we saw Kingpin in Hawkeye. <sighs> to me man I am so excited for this this should definitely be a, so, a dope series now some people are kind of a little worried that you know Disney might Disney this a little bit and kind of water it down from the gritty dark edge of how we saw this on Netflix but me I'm a little hopeful simply because that dark edge gritty version is now on Disney Plus so I'm hoping that they keep that same energy and keep it going like that 
And, you know, maybe just judge it up a little bit. But, you know, I don't want it to be too watered down. You know what I mean? But I'm hopeful. Speaking of Marvel series, She-Hulk Attorney at Law gets a release date. Marvel finally gave us a lengthy look at the upcoming series now titled She-Hulk Attorney at Law, showing off Tatana Mansley's portrayal of Jennifer Walters in earnest and dropping a release date of August 17th. Aside from some seemingly accidental teases earlier this year, this is the first full look we've gotten as Mansley's in the role, as well as a more full look of the character of Walters in a comedic juxtaposition of her role as She-Hulk and her goals to be a serious lawyer. We also get a look at Mark Ruffalo returning as Bruce Banner, handing off the Hulk role to a reluctant but powerful Walters as she comes to terms with her powers and the intersection of her personal life and career. Alongside Ruffalo, Tim Roth returns as Abomination, looking like he might need some sort of legal advice from Walters. This series is going to be dope. I can't wait to watch it. A lot of y'all have already jumped to attack the CGI. Me, for one, it's CGI. Is it really supposed to look real? I mean, it's CGI. I mean, y'all saying the CGI looks bad, but I mean, in comparison to what? The, the, the green lady you saw down the street? Or would you rather just have somebody who really is a 10 foot tall, muscular cut, but very curvy green woman just do cosplay? <laughs> I mean, come on. And, you know, not to mention, you know, we, st- we still have plenty of time. I mean, Marvel, they listen to us. And they'll fix it if there is anything to fix. Not not for me, at least. But, you know, if they hear y'all complain enough, they'll, they'll tweak it up. But the series, definitely looking forward to it. We also got a first look at Mindy Kaling's Velma animated series. And it's a departure from the Scooby-Doo cartoons. In the first look at the adult animation comedy, which is a spinoff of the popular Scooby-Doo cartoons, we got our first glimpse at the reimagined Velma Dinkley. Quote, hopefully you notice my Velma is South Asian, Kelling told the crowd. If people freak out about that, I don't care. (laughs) There you go, girl. Talk your shit. Aside from the new look of the titular character, the spinoff certainly looks more gruesome than anything we've seen in the past. Based on the image that has been teased around the internet, Velma, the series, definitely seems to be leaning toward more of an adult theme for the audience. In this image, Velma stands at the front of a crowd overlooking a person with the top of their head and brain missing. So yeah, this is definitely going off the rails and I'm here for it. Let's go. Netflix unveils the new Umbrella Academy Season 3 trailer. The two-minute trailer reveals that yes, Another apocalypse is coming, and the Umbrella Academy once again has just a few days to stop it, though this time while also contending with the alternate timeline Sparrow Academy. The trailer shows some of the new characters in action, seemingly taking place immediately after the season 2 ending when the Umbrella Academy members refuse when they return to present day. The Sparrow Academy, made up of equally unusual children born alongside the Umbrella Academy cast, including a grown-up, very much alive Ben, appear to take to attack their counterparts to begin with, but later grow to get along. Their powers seem just as wacky as the Umbrella Academy crew, with one member summoning killer crows and another one shooting red lightning. As Diego describes it in the trailer, We've been replaced by a bunch of blobs and cubes and birds and shit. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, this is going to be a great series. I cannot wait. Like, the series had just, it it just takes it up more and more and more. Just keeps pushing the boundaries. And I think this season three is going to be a roller coaster of a ride. I cannot wait. The Boys season three trailer reveals quest to kill Homelander. Finally, let's take this dude out. Coming June 3rd, the third season of the superhero satire show will see Butcher take the serum that turns him into a superpowered human himself. I'll bet for just 24 hours. For once, I have leveled the fucking playing field, he says, referring to his long-standing battle with corrupt superheroes. Presumably in the path of his new glowing eyes is Homelander, who according to Starlight has lost his effing mind. It seems the gloves are off in a fight against the world's most deranged patriot, although it's clear Butcher's peers don't think too much of his radical new methods. 
Season 3 is also set to introduce Soldier Boy, a character from the comics who will be played by Jensen Ackles. He will apparently be worse than Homelander. Oh my god. You mean a racist that's more racist? <laughs> Whatever will we do? But yeah, I'm here for it. The boys, they always deliver, and I can't wait to see this one well. Riverdale comes to an end with season seven at the CW. See, there we go. Rise and fall. <laughs> Riverdale was renewed for season seven in March, along with several other CW dramas, including The Flash, All American, Superman and Lois, Walker, Kung Fu, and Nancy Drew. However, that green light for another season wasn't indicative of Riverdale's future. As it turns out, the upcoming seventh season will actually be the show's last on the network. Quote, I am a big believer in attempting to give series that have had long runs an appropriate send-off, said CW Chairman and CEO Mark Pedowitz. We have had a long conversation with executive Roberto Aquarasaka yesterday who is thrilled by the news and we will treat the show in the manner it deserves. We want to make sure it goes out the right way. The Archie Comics inspired show is the latest series to have the axe fall down in the CW. The network previously canceled Dynasty, Charmed, Naomi, The 4400, In the Dark, Roswell, New Mexico, as well as DC's Batwoman, which was chopped after three seasons and Legends of Tomorrow, which was canceled after seven seasons and more than 100 episodes. Now, honestly, I don't want to disrespect anybody out there who's a big fan of Legends of Tomorrow. However, I choose violence. I don't want peace. I want problems, always. How the hell did this show go on that long in the first place? I mean, the first couple of seasons were great, but... Like every other CWC show, with DC, once we get around season three or four, it gets kind of dumb, and I don't, I don't, I don't know how it. I don't even. I don't know how Legends of Tomorrow went seven seasons. I I do not understand how that happened, but it did, and it has finally run its course. Good riddance. Anyway. <laughs> And finally, we have a first look at CW's Gotham Knights. Now, just in case you thought the CW was done making TV shows based on DC characters, <clears throat> it ain't happening. The network unveils a first look of the new show Gotham Knights, focused on Gotham City after the death of Batman. The stock photo that we've seen around the uh, internet here, posted on Twitter by showrunner Natalie Abrams, as well as the official Gotham Knights Twitter page. The first look shows off the main cast members, including Oscar Morgan as Turner Hayes, Tyler DeChara as Cullen Bowe, Navia Robinson as Carrie Kelly, Fallon Smythe as Harper Rowe, and Olivia Rose Keegan as Duella Dent. The official synopsis is as follows. Batman is dead, and a powder keg has ignited Gotham City without the Dark Knight to protect it. In the wake of Bruce Wayne's murder, his adopted son, Turner Hayes, is framed for killing the Cape Crusader, along with the children of some of Batman's enemies. Duella, an unpredictable fighter and skilled thief who was born in Arkham Asylum and abandoned by her father. Harper Rowe, a streetwise and acrobatic engineer who can fix anything, and her brother Cullen, a clever transgender teen who is tired of being polite and agreeable. With the charismatic and hard-charging district attorney Harvey Dent and the GCP having their tail, Turner will rely on allies including his best friend and formidable coder Stephanie Brown and unlikely Batman sidekick Carrie Kelly. But our knights will soon learn there is a larger, more nefarious force at work in Gotham City. This team of mismatched fugitives must band together to become its next generation of saviors known as the Gotham Knights. Now, I would tell you guys what I think about this and pretty much all other CW TV shows, but I'm going to save it for June 1st. So as announced at the top of the show, please pull up to Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube on June 1st for the rise and fall of the CW the rise and fall of DC shows on CW pull up for that. I got words and I'm sure my panel of guests will as well. 
Let's hop into Fum Life. Peace, love, and video games! That's all like Donkey Kong! Yeah. That man is playing Galaga. Alright people, Marvel Snap is the long-awaited CCG from the former Hearthstone devs at Second Dinner. Marvel Snap clearly wears its Hearthstone DNA on its sleeve right now to the booming voice of Bruce showing off mechanics in the official reveal. Its main draw is the brevity of matches with the average Marvel Snap game ideally only lasting 3 minutes. It accomplishes this by eliminating back and forth turns and allowing players to play simultaneously, layering turns on top of one another. It also limits both players on a 12 card deck in a given game. Gamers can take across can take place across three randomized locations out of a possible 50 mm, that can impact strategy. It's tough to tell from the reveal exactly how gameplay flows or works, but one element described in its reveal is the most battle over cosmic cubes, where players fight to be the one with the most cubes in the match. Connected to that is the ability to snap an opponent to double the cube stake. <laughs> Oh man, at launch, Marvel Snap will include over 150 base cards made up of Marvel heroes and villains, including different variants of characters with different arts and artists. More cards will be released each month as new seasons roll out and all cards can be acquired in-game without time, without spending money, though it sounds like microtransactions of some sort will be present giving it's free to play. For now, Second Dinner hasn't exactly said which characters will be available at launch, but so far, we have seen Cosmo, Captain America, Multiple Man, Shang-Chi, Scarlet Witch, The Infinite, Iceman, Ghost Rider, Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, Professor X, White Tiger, Gamora, Hulk, Mysterio, Venom, and a ton more in various screenshots and footage. So we can expect a pretty robust lineup. Yeah, man, card games. Um, not really my cup of tea, but I'm pretty sure there are those of us out there who listen, and uh, this might be up your alley. Might be something to do. The microtransactions might get you in the end, but uh, you know, you got them. You got them pockets. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's let's see what's up for this game. And finally, we have the reveal of multiverses, and it manages to make its wild combination of franchises work. I mean, let's just run down some of the names. Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, Batman, Adventure Times, Jake, Harley Quinn, Bugs Bunny, The Iron Giant, Taz, Wonder Woman. I mean, even more face off in the cinematic trailer for Multiverses. Now, you can check out a sneak peek of the roster of this upcoming free-to-play platform, 2 vs. 2 matches, which is pretty much a complete bite off Smash Brothers. Um, an open beta an open beta for Multiverses will be coming in July 2022 for PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series XS, Xbox One, and PC, and will fully cross-play support and dedicated server-based rollback netcode. So you'll be able to fight anybody. This one should be dope. I can't wait to see what's up to this one. Just the fact that I'll be able to have a face-off of Bugs Bunny and Tom from Tom and Jerry, this should be pretty hilarious. Let's go. All right, you nerds, let's mark out. So what you gonna do? All right, you wrestling nerds. Ric Flair will wrestle one last pro match. What the hell did you just say? Yes, that is the story. So Ric Flair is stepping back into the ring for one last match on July 31st at the Nashville Fairgrounds. The Nature Boy has been uploading videos of himself back in the ring training with AEW's Jay Lethal despite being 73 years old and five years removed from a nearly fatal medical emergency where he needed an obstructive piece of bowel removed and suffered kidney failure. While he initially retired at WrestleMania 25, 24, sorry, in 2008, he would go on to wrestle 16 more matches, the last of which was against his old WCW rival Sting, 
on September 12, 2011 on an episode of Impact Wrestling. The event titled Jim Crockett Promotion Presents Ric Flair's Last Match will see the revival of the classic promotion for one night as part of Conrad Thompson's StarCast 5 fan event. Ric Flair will also be roasted during this event as well. A press release has since dropped hyping the event, which reads on July 31st at 6.05, the nature boy Ric Flair, who many consider the greatest professional wrestler of all time, said to return to the ring one final time as part of Jim Crockett Promotion Presents Ric Flair's Last Match. Taking place at the world-famous Nashville Fairgrounds, the 16-time former World Heavyweight Champion will don a new custom-made robe and bring the one-of-a-kind showmanship that has made Flair a cultural icon for his over 40 years in the professional wrestling business. A quote from Flair saying, I'm going to walk down that aisle one last time to prove once and for all to be the man, you've got to beat the man. I wonder who his opponent's going to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, mentioning the bowel removal and the kidney failure, not to mention you're 73 years old, Flair. Why are you doing this? You have nothing left to prove. Not just in professional wrestling culture, just culture, period. You have influenced so many people, especially in hip hop. I mean, damn it, you're you're Ric Flair. Your name is Ric Flair, dude. Like you you do know who you are, right? Maybe that's it. Maybe he has dementia. He doesn't know who he is. <laughs> I mean, you have no reason at all to do this. Like, just if it was me, I would do everything in my power to talk Rick out of this. But clearly that man's going to die in the ring. Hopefully he does not. But it's head that way. <laughs> Hopefully whoever faces him is very safe and protects Rick at all costs. And finally, Stephanie McMahon is taking a leave of absence from WWE. WWE Chief Brand Officer Stephanie McMahon has been a major part of WWE for quite some time, but she announced recently she is taking a leave of absence from most of her responsibilities from the company. In a social media post, McMahon said that WWE is a legacy for her and she looks toward going on to return to the company soon. As she is taking the leave for now of absence, McMahon said she is taking no time away for to focus on her family and we wish them all the best. You can read her full statement on her Twitter page and also Instagram. As she wrote, as of tomorrow, I'm taking a leave of absence from the majority of my responsibilities of WWE. WWE is a lifelong legacy for me, and I look forward to returning to the company that I love as taking this little time to focus on my family. Now, I jokingly had said this is just code for, hey, my daughter's pregnant. <laughs> but um, this could be a uh, move to push Stephanie out. You never know. I mean, with... That greaseball Nick Khan and his rise to power being handpicked by Vince McMahon. I mean, this could be pushing her out. Now, unrelated but related, Triple H is back full time. So I wonder what he'll be doing. And hopefully he can help bring some sort of greatness back to this company. Because right now the company is trash, especially his baby NXT. I mean, come on. NXT is the worst it's ever been right now. It's so bad. But... Stephanie, take that time away, rest up, recuperate, chill, relax, spend time with your family, and um, yeah, look forward to seeing you back. But while you are off chilling, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here too. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to watch this podcast, subscribe to this podcast, let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Quirk Chat. Check out the YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek? <laughs> <laughs>